welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello my name is Tweet. it's been a while since i've done a tweet test video and you guys love my reviews you love how honest i am and hopefully we can dissect the makeup industry to see what's actually really worth it because brands just be pumping out the products these days without putting any thought into anything so in my tweet test videos if you're new around here i like to dissect everything i want to tell you guys the price the longevity if it's worth it my first impressions anything that i can pick up to tell you guys if it's worth your money that's what i'm here to do jacqueline she's been through a lot you know she's had some hairy lipsticks she got knocked down and now she got back up dusted herself off and she's here with another makeup collection she's brought out an under eye cream she's brought out a baking powder she's brought out baking palettes we're going to be testing everything out in this video her products actually get released tomorrow so i wanted to get this video up for you guys so you can and see if it's actually worth your money so if you guys want to see my first impressions and my honest thoughts about Jacqueline's powders please keep watching <laughs> Wow, I really hit the high note on that one. Okay, so I have no makeup on at the moment. Clearly, as you guys can see from the patchy pal bitch over here, I have new nails. Who's this? Okay, so I feel like it's been a while since I've done a tweet test video, and I know you guys love my honest ass reviews that could get me cancelled at any time now. I actually have no idea how Jacqueline's team got my dress, but I ain't complaining. If you guys haven't seen my review on her liquid lipsticks, I'll leave the video up here. It was not a very good review, if I'm completely honest, so I feel a little bit apprehensive to film this video. I do love Jacqueline, and I feel like she's had a lot of hard times that I just don't know if I could ever come back from if I experienced it myself. So fingers crossed, Jacqueline, don't let me down. Okay, guys, I'm not gonna lie, this whole collection has my panties a little bit moist because I just love me a little bit of powder. I love a bright under eye. So we have her translucent powder here. I do like the J that's kind of embossed. It feels really light and soft. Mm, okay. First impressions, girl. I do not know how translucent this powder is. Can you guys see? It has a little bit of a white cast. I don't know if that's very translucent to me. Because if you had a darker skin tone, wouldn't that look a little bit ashy? You guys can clearly see that the powder's here, right? Do a swatch for you guys so you can see properly. That's a translucent powder here. Then when you blend it in, it definitely leaves some sort of like cast. I'm excited about this eye cream slash eye primer. I find that a lot of eye creams, when you put on underneath concealer or foundation, it starts to kind of bubble up. And apparently this product is designed to not do that. Okay, so this product says that it delivers a soft, focused, blurring finish, a silky texture infused with rich sheer butter, and it's $24. Oh, okay, so I like the metal tip. I always find that this is really nice underneath the eyes if you've got like puffiness or anything like that. Okay, so the product looks like an eye cream and it definitely leaves that kind of silicone-y kind of texture. But it also feels quite moisturising at the same time. So this is exciting. Okay, let's rub this in. This product will probably be amazing for anyone who has problems with like cakiness underneath their eyes. Oh my god, my under eyes feel so nice. It definitely has a similar feeling to like a silicone kind of primer, but it also feels quite smooth as well, where it actually feels hydrating. Might as well smooth up my pores while I'm here. Feels so nice. Okay guys, I am back and I have on my foundation highlight contour. So she has this product called the Brightening Setting Face Palette. So there's four palettes inside here. Obviously, they are a bit light, but these are meant to be brightening powders. I feel like here, it's just a little bit of excess packaging. I always prefer things to be as slimline as possible. So I feel like the pans either could have been bigger or this could have been cut out a little bit more. These are $39 each, which I think is quite a fair-ish price, considering that you get four different colours here. So the only thing that I have similar like this is Nikita Dragon's Transformation Brightening Powders. And sometimes I do feel like the shades are a little bit too light. So I do like the fact that Jack then bought out slightly deeper ones and i like the fact that there's four shades so you can like mix and match you know oh the product feels really nice and creamy oh yes 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 it's giving me good coverage there's one that's a bit more pinky one's really nice and yellow and one's more like my actual skin kind of shade okay so i don't even know what shade i should go in with first maybe i'm going to add a little bit of peach with a little bit of yellow Let's zoom you guys in also, I do have to say that underneath my eyes does feel a lot smoother. Normally, I get a lot of creasing around here, but maybe that under eye primer helped kind of smooth that out. Okay, so let's go in. Oh, okay. It's very bright. I feel like it's a little bit too bright. There's a big patch here that I'm unable to blend out. It's kind of just stuck 
on here but it is helping to brighten underneath my eyes though i need to go in with this one a little bit more because the yellow one can look a little bit ashy underneath the eyes that skin color shade is a really nice addition to this palette when it's too bright underneath the eyes you might get a bit of flashback or it can look a bit too ashy underneath the eyes looking up close though i feel like it's giving a filter effect underneath the eyes it's really smoothed everything out Oh my god, and it feels so soft underneath the eyes. I feel like it's really helped smooth out any fine lines that I have underneath my eyes. Especially because I have my hair up today, I feel like I need a lot of brightness and a lot of like this kind of motion, you know. I need everything to go upwards today to go with my snatch ponytail, you know. Alrighty, so next up we're going to go in with the translucent powder. And this product I'm a little bit worried about. I feel like there's a little bit of like a barrier on this translucent powder where there's not a lot of product that's coming out you know i don't know if i'm feeling it as much it's not anything that's like wow this kind of reminds me of like the makeup forever hd powder you know when it's like a really stark white whereas i prefer something like the translucent powder from laura mercy it has a slightly beigey kind of undertone to it i guess it's set the skin but it's definitely nothing special it hasn't blurred my pores it's quite a thin powder i think this powder might be a cute touching up powder maybe to slip into your bag um, okay so i just added some blush and my brows so she has released five loose powders and I actually looked at all of the shades and I feel like she's done such a good job with the shades. so there is a brightening lilac color which is really different I've never seen a brand launch a lilac powder before so this will be amazing for all of my paler skin sisters out there and then she also has a brightening pink it kind of reminds me of the baking powder that Patrick Star released with Mac which was really really popular there is a brightening light banana powder which is a really nice yellow shade there is a brightening banana powder Powder. so this shade is a little bit deeper than the light banana here is a side by side comparison both shades is right up my street and then for anyone with a deeper complexion she has the brightening apricot so the loose powders is $29 and then also the translucent powder was also $29 as well sometimes I feel like a lot of products you don't know how much you have left in there this sister is quite translucent so you can really see how much you have left you know I'm gonna bake one side with the banana shade and one side with the light banana here is a comparison so you guys can see this is the normal banana and then this one's the light banana okay so we're gonna go with the lighter shade on this side first when i saw jacqueline's igtv of the way that she baked i was like god damn i've got oily skin and i don't even bake that much and she literally baked quite heavy oh this does feel a little bit drying oh my god it's a lot of powder can you see all those lines okay i'm gonna flip my sponge over and go in with the banana shade i feel like the deeper banana shade is the shade that i'm more likely to go for okay do you want to snatch in the nose you can feel the powder on your skin as soon as i put it on it's like <laughs> sucking in any oil you know and then she also done like a massive line to clean up her contour anywhere that i put this powder it feels like it's like sucking in any moisture it's weird i feel like around my mouth it's like cracking okay then i'm gonna go back to the lighter side i'm so scared to put this lighter powder here when I saw Jack can do this, I was like, oh my god, that looks crazy. It looks like she's painting on like a white stripe. I've never seen a powder that has this amount of coverage before. My under eyes have never looked so crepey before. I'm hoping when I brush off the bakage, it will be nice and smooth. But right now, my face feels so dry and so crepey. I'm a little bit nervous. But I'm going to go off camera and quickly do some eyeshadow. A little... Okay, so your girl is back. You guys, you would never believe what happened the other day when I filmed this. It was going so well and then I put in the SD card and then the camera had no audio. So I'm here, refilming, back where we left off. So it's time to dust off the bakage. I'm not gonna lie, this powder feels very heavy on my skin. Okay, so first impressions, I do have to say that I think this side will come out a bit better. I feel like my skin tone, I won't be able to get away with this white ass baking powder even though it's meant to be light banana but on my skin it literally looks like white translucent powder so i really hope it's not going to leave me like a white ass cast on my skin and i'm going to like casper the ghost james charles flashback mary version 2 Hi, okay so i'm gonna blend this poppy out i can't believe that jacqueline hill bakes her face this much as she says she's got dry skin so it's cleaned up my contour really nicely it did leave a little bit of like a white cast Guys, my skin looks hella powdery. I feel like on this side, my face looks very white. I feel like I need to bronze my skin extra on this side to kind of calm down how bright it is. I don't know if you guys can see up close and if this camera will pick it up, but my face looks dry. 
Okay, so let's blend out this side. This side looks definitely a lot better colour-wise. I feel like that baking powder really did snatch in my nose though. You can still kind of see the cast where I put that baking powder. So it's definitely like a brightening baking powder. I think maybe next time I wouldn't bake as much. I just tried to copy Jacqueline's IGTV and then now I feel like I look like I've got so many lines and so many white patches everywhere. I feel like from afar my foundation looks super flawless but up close I feel like I look quite cakey. And the powder almost has a little tiny bit of a sheen in there so it kind of makes my skin look a little bit crepey I don't know because it's so powdery but it's got a bit of a sheen I feel like it picks up a little bit of texture but from afar it looks really nice and bright so it's hard to win you know do you want to look good from afar or do you want to look good close up I don't know okay I'm back and I have my full face done I feel like my face still feels very very dry even though I added a little bit of highlighter and it's kind of stopped it looking so dry I still feel like when I'm moving my face it feels tight it feels like I have no more moisturizer on underneath my foundation. I'm gonna go in with the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of my favorite setting sprays. I don't know what is in here. The mist ain't even great, the scent ain't even great, the packaging ain't even great, but the formula it's the best I've ever tried. It makes your foundation last so much longer. Okay, guys, so I'm going to run through my final thoughts on each item. If it's worth it, would I spend the money on it? Would I actually buy it with my own money? Would I repurchase it? Okay, so we're going to start off with the hydrating under eye primer. I did like this primer. I feel like if you have a lot of problems with creasing or if you have a dry under eye, I personally don't suffer from that problem. For me, it's something that I probably wouldn't run out to buy. This product is about $24. So that's about 20 pounds, 22 pounds. You get 9 ml. 9 ml, that's not even that much, girl. But then again, underneath your eyes, you don't need that much. I do feel like this product is a little bit different compared to other eye creams. A lot of times, I actually never wear eye creams underneath my makeup because I find that my foundation or my concealer kind of gathers up and it kind of balls up around the eye cream. A lot of times, I just kind of skip that step. But this product is actually designed to go underneath makeup. So if you do have a problem with creasing or if you have a lot of dry patches underneath your eyes maybe this product might be worth trying i like the fact that it has a metal applicator i feel like that helps depuff the eye and it's a really nice formula it doesn't feel too silicone-y where it feels really thick underneath the eyes but it definitely feels hydrating okay so next up let's talk about the translucent powder if i was going to go for a translucent powder my go-to would be the lord mercier one it has a bit more of like a beigey kind of undertone so it doesn't have a white cast onto your skin whereas this one this is like a stark white and i also feel like the powder has more of that shiny kind of finish which I am not a fan of. I normally don't like anything that has like a pearlescent finish to it. I feel like it exaggerates my congestion a little bit more and any bumps that I have on my skin. It kind of gives you like a white cast. I don't think it's fully translucent so if you are a deeper skin tone I don't think you'll be able to get away with this translucent powder. So this is one that I would definitely skip and I don't think it's worth the money this one. Okay so next up let's talk about the brightening and setting palette. So this comes in four shades. I actually really like this product. It kind of reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless powders how silky it is it definitely brightens up underneath the eyes and the product actually comes out a bit lighter than I thought it would originally I used the second palette in the range so it's more like a light medium kind of finish but I actually think the one that's for medium to tan skin might work a little bit better for me I don't really like my under eyes too bright sometimes I feel like it can leave a bit of a white cast underneath the eyes especially when I'm taking flash photography but I really like the formula of these powders I feel like it's really nice and silky it's very different. If you like the Dragon Beauty Transformation Powder Kit, I feel like you would love these Jack and Heel powders. Sometimes I feel like with the Dragon Beauty one, although it's very unique and it gives me a nice brightening finish, sometimes I do feel like it's very light, especially when I go on holiday and I'm a bit more tanned. I feel like the colouring sometimes look a bit too stark. I do wish that there wasn't so much extra space here on the side. She could have made the pads a little bit bigger, a little bit wider to fill up that gap. I also feel like the palette is quite wide as well. Holding it in my hands, I feel like my hands are like really stretching you know so I think if you are like an NC20 to an NC30 maybe you can go for the second to lightest powder if you are NC35 NC40 NC42 you would probably be this shade here which is the third darkest palette the only gripe that I do have is this is the darkest shade and I don't know if this would be dark enough for someone of like a really deep complexion I do like the fact it has a really nice orange powder here so it would help brighten 
lighten up underneath deeper skin complexions I feel like this shade here isn't that dark I don't think someone of Naima Tang's skin tone would be able to get away with this I'm not too sure obviously I'm not that skin complexion so I won't be able to comment but I do say looking at this it looks a little bit light but then again it is a brightening powder so you're meant to go a little bit lighter so it's a bit like mm. okay and finally let's talk about the bake and brightening under eye loose powder so this comes in five shades it's $29 which I think is quite a fair price you get six grams of product and I really like the brightening banana I feel like the light banana shade is a little bit too light for my skin tone I think that's better for someone that's like an NC20 to maybe like a light NC30 I'm more of like an NC32 NC35 I think that color might fit me more when I'm at my winter shade but at the moment I've got a little bit more color to my skin I still got a slight bit of tan going on so I'm definitely not my palest the brightening banana powder is really really nice it had a nice yellow golden undertone so I feel like it really lifted up underneath my eyes which is great I personally do feel like the powders are a little bit drying so if you don't like heavy powders you probably won't like this because it definitely felt heavy on my skin obviously there's ways around that like you can use a brush you can use a lot less you don't have to bake with the product so there's ways around that heavy feeling just going off Jacqueline's video that's what I wanted to copy because that's the way that she showed it and I definitely feel like that powder felt cakey on my skin but now that I wiped away the powder I put my blush and I put my highlighter on I feel like my skin looks so flawless the setting spray really helped blend in that powder and let it soak into my skin a little bit more and I do feel like the powder is quite oil absorbing so it will be good for oily skin gals like me I really like the idea that she brought out a lavender shade for people of a lighter complexion because when you have a lighter complexion it's really hard to brighten up underneath the eyes lavender is such an underrated shade it really does help brighten underneath the eyes but only for certain skin tones you know I feel like if I use lavender that brightening effect it'll be like oh your white goes underneath your eyes girl I definitely actually recommend the brightening banana powder only if you like a bit more heavy full coverage powders it kind of reminds me of like a Laura Mercier translucent powder that kind of heavy texture but I feel like this one feels even more heavy but then I also feel like this product will lock in my foundation a little bit longer which is a bit crazy because the Laura Mercier one that does some heavy duty setting okay okay guys so that is it for my Jaclyn Hill powder review I hope you guys enjoyed this tweet test from afar my skin looks super flawless I feel like I'm picture perfect who doesn't want picture perfect skin might look a little bit cakey in real life but hey it's the internet we can fool anyone you know even up close it doesn't look too crazy you know it doesn't look too cakey I feel like that setting spray really helped merge everything in together you know it helped melt everything in if you guys like this tweed test please let me know down below in the comments it really really does help me out and also if you could do me a little favor and just hit the thumbs up button that just allows YouTube to push up my YouTube channel to a wider audience I feel like I'm on it with this YouTube life I've been grinding I've been consistent but YouTube just doesn't want to help your sister out and doesn't want to push out my videos if you can help me comment down below give me a little thumbs up it all helps the community up in here i would appreciate that so much gang gang thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in my next one bye don't let me down 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 wait that's not the song don't let me down 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 no that's not a song either this chair is very squeaky oh my god this chair makes my ass squeaky my lips be hella dry look at this dry skin here oh it's so annoying but i don't want to pick it off because i know it'll make my lip bleed so i'm just gonna soak loads of lip balm and hope that the dry skin gets a bit soggy and then i can roll it off later <laughs> ah! if it's falling there's no countertop space i'm using one of my favorite brushes from elf this elf this is not elf oh my god it is gonna cancel me bruh okay <laughs> I cannot talk today, clearly. So I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Air Blush. Air Blush? This is not a blush. Can you imagine a blush but in a spray? Someone needs to do that. I have to keep my eye on this mic at all times now because she's been playing me recently. Lavender is really nice. So, so not so not nice. Nice. Nice.